Hello, welcome to a research methods video, and this is on content analysis. So it's specification five and 32 on the A-level research methods spec. Um, so the spec says content analysis and coding and thematic analysis. So content analysis is a way of analysing qualitative data. And you know that qualitative data is where you get data that is words. And it's a bit like doing an observation, but instead of observing people, we are analysing forms of media. So if you look at that little word cloud there, um, it says content analysis. And the things in it are things that you could analyse the content of. All of these are media that we would try to analyze and evaluate. So you might have recorded some videos um, and, uh, sorry, you might have recorded some videos of interviews. And so the interview, um, when you record it, that is a form of media. And it's a way of going through the interview and listening to all those words that are said and transforming that data um, into data that can be analyzed. So, We've got some other data uh, media there, things like films, box sets, um, books, cartoons, music, art, pictures, poetry, TV, questionnaires, anything that is a, um, a form of media where we can analyse the content. So that's the purpose of it, to analyse the content of media. So when you do a content analysis, as I said, it's a little bit like an observation. So if you were doing an observation, then you would um, first of all decide your behavioural categories, then you would watch the scenario unfolding, like the strange situation, and you would tally every time you saw those um, behaviour categories. For a content analysis, it's an indirect observation. So you're looking at something, but you still need to first of all decide on your behavioural categories. But in this case, we call them coding units. So the coding unit means that before you begin, um, you will decide your coding units, then you'll look through whatever media you have and then tally up every time you see it. And the coding unit could be very specific or it could actually be a theme and that's where we get thematic analysis. So this is a picture of a little girl looking through a newspaper. So the newspaper is our form of media and she is, um, she's looking through it but if we were looking through it you can see it says the eagle has landed two men walk on the moon so this is a newspaper from 1969 and you would look through the media and the themes that you might see might be things like um, being patriotic or the technology that's involved and so every time so you read through the newspaper and every time you see those themes you would tally them up but um sometimes coding units can be more specific um so you're either looking for very specific coding units which are operationalized or for particular themes um, like patriotism, for example. So coding units are the specific behaviours, actions or words or phrases that you're going to count in the material chosen to be analysed. And that could be of anything of interest to the researcher. So, of course, um, psychologists are trying to understand human behaviour um, and so we're looking, and so it could be any any area of human behaviour that we're looking at. So it could be a coding unit might be a particular word or a phrase like um, stress or value for money. It could be um, a semantic category, like so semantics is like the meanings of words, and that might be in particular reference to an event or an object. Um, you might a coding unit might be a type of utterance. So um, an adjective or a verb or laughter or silence um, and they could be specific observable behaviours like hugging, handshaking, crying. So the coding units will depend on what you're studying. Um, you will decide on the coding units and they should be operationalised so that they're not subjective, they are objective. So you might do a content analysis, as I said, just on, on one one form of media, like you might just look through a newspaper looking for themes, or you can do com content analysis for comparison. Um, so you might compare children's books from different ages. So there's Angry Birds, which my six year old son is quite keen on reading at the moment. Um, and there's Ivy the Engine story that was given to me by my auntie in 1980, I think. 
Uh, so it's quite an old book. And so a content analysis might compare the content of children's books from different time periods to evaluate certain things. So there was a researcher who did this to evaluate the appearances of gender, age, race, parental behaviours and child rearing structures from books of different ages. And that content analysis was actually done as a sociological study. Um, you can Google that if you want. It was by Angela Anderson. It was called Power Disparities and the Structure of Child Rearing, a content analysis of best-selling children's books. So she was looking for the, that content and this is her abstract. This is her summary of her final thesis that she wrote. And you can see her findings. Uh, her findings found that gender and age disparities prevail, which means gender and age um, differences were both in older books and more current books. Um, so she found that non-white main characters remained invisible throughout the time period that she was looking at and that males as main adult characters exhibited higher rates of parental behaviours so they were more in control. Um, and so this content analysis of children's books was finding that there was very little difference in the time period in regards to like the stereotypes that you see in children's books regarding um, parental behaviours um, and race and gender, those stereotypes prevailed. That's what she found. So a content analysis can be done to compare different things to see if there's a difference or not and to see what's happening in life. Now, this, was, as I said, was actually a sociological investigation because they're looking at how society is shaped. And, and obviously, if you study sociology, you'll know far more than me. Um, but in psychology, we're, we're really interested in uh, behaviours of individuals. So we are looking at how people are treated and um, gender is a hot topic in psychology today as well, so content analysis is very uh, important. Um, content analysis can be done on social media. So I've got some social media tweets here from um, the presidential campaign for 2020. So in three weeks time, because I'm doing this in October 2020, then Americans will be voting for the president they want. And at the moment, it's Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. And so they will be tweeting at the moment. And a, a psychologist might be interested in analysing the content of those tweets and those threads. Um, and the coding units might be things like looking for. Um, well, let's have a look at them. Uh, so Donald Trump is talking about fracking, but he's trying to scare people. And Joe Biden is talking about COVID and he also is trying to scare people. You can see the themes in here, like the way that their campaigns are being run are to try and slander and slate the other person and to instill fear into the voters to try and get their votes. So vote for me or this is going to happen. Vote for me or this is going to happen. And so what a psychologist might do is go through lots of their tweets and threads and find example like coding units examples of like scare tactics. And they would have to operationalize that. Um, so, but that's another example of how content analysis can be done. It can be done through analyzing social media content. So you're going to do a content analysis now and you're going to do it on Sam Hunt's music video called Take Your Time. And you, uh, the aim, is we are going to investigate the pro and anti-social behaviours displayed in popular music videos. Now, this was a music video from 2015. Um, the reason I've used someone asked me yesterday why I used it, and it's because in the video we can actually see quite a lot of pro and anti-social behaviours, which isn't always the case in music videos. Um, so my hypothesis like, would be something like there'll be more anti-social behaviours in a music video by Sam Hunt compared to pro-social behaviours. So we're looking at the difference between antisocial and pro-social behaviours. So the way you would do it is watch Sam Hunt's music video uh, called Take Your Time. So if you could just Google that on YouTube, it's quite easy to see. Watch the video first of all, because I'm assuming a lot of you won't have already seen it. Um, when you've seen it, then you're going to, once you've seen it once, as you're watching it, decide on coding units for both pro and antisocial behaviours. So any, any behaviours in it that you see that are pro-social, so you'll notice in the video when you watch it, there's quite a lot of um, content about a baby. So any kind of 
pro-social behaviours of child caring, but you need to operationalise that. What are they actually doing that is showing that they're being a caring parent? Um, and it could be like good relationships as well that we see. There's also antisocial behaviours because there's some kind of um, domestic dispute going on. So you might see some antisocial behaviours and operationalise them. You know, don't just say fighting. You need to like be really specific about what you're seeing. So when we've done this in class before, we've come up with about five of antisocial and five pro-social behaviours. So see if you can come up with five coding units for those. You can use handout SP, um, sorry, RM11, which I have emailed to everybody. Um, and or if you haven't got it, then have a look on MS Files and Research Methods and just upload handout RM11. So it explains about content analysis and it provides you with like a tally chart table. So it is very much like an observation. The coding units are like your behavioural categories and you leave a space to tally up every time you see those behaviours. Now you're going to do an event sample, which you know to mean that every time you see one of the coding units, you will tally it. So that's event sampling where in the whole video, every time you see that behaviour, you give it a tally. So that's so when you watch the video again, that's when you make your tallies. You can also assess your reliability of the um, of the content analysis. And again, that's very similar to how you assess reliability in observations. So pause the video and think, how do you assess the reliability of a observation, first of all? And welcome back. And hopefully you remember that it's called inter observer reliability. And there are three steps where in an observation you um, agree behavioural categories with another observer. Step two, you independently watch the same situation and tally your um, behavioural categories. Step three, you compare the results of your investigation with your other observer. And if your results correlate by 0.8 or more, then you have inter-observer reliability. So for content analysis, it's pretty much exactly the same, but we call it inter-rater reliability because it isn't actually an observation but it's the same. So step one, agree your coding units with someone else. Step two, independently watch the same music video and, and tally up your findings. Step three, compare your tallies and see if they correlate by 0.8 or more. Now, I don't, you're not gonna actually do the Spearman's Row test to do the correlation, but just make sure that you get in touch with someone else from the class and compare your findings. Um, if you've got huge disparities, like someone sees like, a hundred instances of shouting and someone else sees two, then you're going to be pretty sure you haven't got reliability. So there's a, a reference there for the newspaper. Um, then take a look, answer the other questions on the handout RM11, except don't do the one on the contingency table, just do the others. Okay, thank you.